Man, so cool to see what God is doing in our church. If I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, my name is Dan DeBell. I'm the lead pastor here at Abide Church, and uh, we're in a season of growth uh, right now. Uh, come on, somebody, which is a good thing at church. Good to see new faces, and um, God's good. Um, what I love most about it is it's not anything that we've done uh, to, to see growth. God's Word says that He builds His church, and uh, as you can see, you know, we don't have a uh, the fanciest of experiences for church. Uh, we, just, we just put God's word, God's word above any word, and uh, he likes to honor people that honor his word. And so it's so cool to see new faces and to see life change and just to see uh, all that God's doing in our church. It's going to be, uh, we're in a great season right now, so thank you for joining us today. Um, if it's your first time here, we're in a series, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and we're kind of doing a little bit of a deep dive. Last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit is our helper, and uh, we talked about uh, last week how many times the Holy Spirit has been misrepresented uh, throughout the years. Many times things have been done in the name of the Holy Spirit that are not actually the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, what I want us to see, though, and before we dive into this, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, a lot of times there's, there's um, preconceived notions, right? We have some hang-ups when it comes to the Holy Spirit because of how he's been represented by people, by humans, and so uh, this past week, I was reminded of this, this old hymn, and uh, it just goes like, it goes like this. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read the, the lyrics, okay? Uh, I'm not going to sing it. It's a, it just says this. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. Such a good, I mean, just those lyrics. That's my heart. When we come together, and, and specifically for this Holy Spirit teaching series, but for every time we gather, every time we go to God's Word, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His Word. Not to overthink it, not to overcomplicate it. He made it simple because we are simple-minded people. He had us in mind when he breathed this book into existence, and he made it easy for us to understand so that we could receive it and we could run with it. And so today, as we look at God's Word, if we talk about some things that maybe, you know, you don't quite understand, or maybe you were taught a little bit different, I would just challenge you to do this. Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Go in your Bible. That's why we have these little note-taking cards. And if you didn't get one, you can raise your hand. We can bring one to you if you'd like. But it has all the verses we're going to talk about today. Man, take it home and look those verses up in your Bible. Because it's not about some good, you know, talk that Pastor Dan put together. No, I, I believe God put a word on my heart for you today. But it's from His Word. It's not from my mind. It's from His Word. It's going to be good. Let's dive right into it. The first point is this. The Holy Spirit is God. We're going to talk about who he is today. We're going to talk a little bit about his character. We're going to talk about um, uh, just who he is as, as a person, how we can relate to him better. The first thing we have to realize is that the Holy Spirit is God. We, we serve one God who is in, in three different persons, right? As we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons functioning as one. This is tough for our, our human mind to understand sometimes, but they, they function together as one. And many times it's easy to see the Father, our Heavenly Father is God, right? It's easy to see Jesus as God, but sometimes it's difficult to see the Holy Spirit as God. Uh, because many times we, we've heard his name differently as the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've heard it, you know, maybe said a different way a time or two. Um, and honestly, whenever they were translating, in many translations, when they were translating that word spirit or Holy Spirit into their language, it was tough to find a word in their language that would accurately represent spirit or represent ghost is how some of them wrote Holy Ghost. It was tough for them to figure out what exactly is this word. In fact, even a better, if you, a better translation maybe even would be this, that he is a breath of air or a force of air. And, and over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about this. We're, we see this in, uh, in the life of Jesus. Whenever his disciples receive salvation for the first time, what does Jesus do? He, it says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We'll see it. And I, I don't want, I'm already getting ahead of myself in the next few weeks. I'm going to stay on what we're talking about today. Um, a breath of air. What I like to think of it as is he's the wind in my sails. Meaning what? 
like on a sailboat, he's, he is moving me, guiding me. He's my motivation. He's my, my purpose for moving forward in this life. He helps direct me where I'm going. I have a part to play. It's a partnership, but he is a, a breath or a force of air that is moving in my life, okay? And we're going to talk about that, like I said, in, in the next coming weeks, but I want us to see this. The Holy Spirit is God. One of the easiest or uh, simplest stories that I can use to, to show you this is found in the book of Acts, starting in, in, in chapter 5. And it's the story, a popular story, of Ananias and Sapphira. This is a husband and wife who just sold a piece of property. And what they do is they sold this property, and they were going to bring some and give it to the church. But whenever they're coming and they're going to give it to the apostles and to the church, they lie about the amount for no apparent reason, and we're going to see that. Let's, let's, in fact, let's read a part of the story in Acts 5, starting in verse 3. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, remember that, and you kept some of the money for yourself. He says, look, the property was yours to sell or to not sell as you wished, and after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us but to God. What's Peter saying? He's saying, look, you could have sold it and kept it to yourself. Like, we didn't ask you to come here and to bring this money, but you came here and tried to make yourself look good with the amount that you said you sold it for and were giving. He said, why are you, why are you playing these games? He said, it's actually really serious that you're doing this because why? He says, you lied to the Holy Spirit, but then at the end, what's he say? Look, you're not just lying to men. When you lie to the Holy Spirit, you're lying to God. He said, you're not just lying to us as humans. If you lie to the Holy Spirit, you lied to God. And this is why me and you in 2021, we must be careful how we talk about the Holy Spirit. He's God. He's God. We have to be careful. Many times we, you know, it's easy to be like, well, that Holy Spirit stuff's a little weird, right? Maybe you've seen some weird stuff on YouTube, or maybe you've been trapped in a few services where it's just like, what is happening right now? Um, and so maybe you have some, some, you know, um, some visuals of the Holy Spirit that way, but we have to be careful how we talk about the Holy Spirit. Many times it's easy to be like, well, I like Jesus, I like God the Father, but that Holy Spirit stuff's a little bit of a wild card, right? I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can go there. When we say we don't want anything to do with the Holy Spirit, we're saying there is a part of God that we don't want anything to do with. And that's why it's dangerous. God, I trust you enough to get saved. I trust you enough to get water baptized, but I don't know beyond that. When God's on the other end saying, hey, I have more for you. This is what we talked about last week. I have more for you. You could experience me more fully if you would trust me enough. If you would what? Take me at my word. Trust me. I have good things for you. But it's found through what? The person of the Holy Spirit, who is God. First thing we need to realize, he's God. Second thing is this. I love this one. The Holy Spirit, this puts you at ease, is not a weirdo, okay? <laughs> so okay to laugh in church. He's not a weirdo, all right? Um, like I said, many times he's been misrepresented in the past. But what I like to say is this. Look, he's not a weirdo. He's not the crazy uncle of the Trinity or of the family of God. He's not. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we, yeah. okay, if you're laughing right now, you maybe have a crazy uncle in your family, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's not that guy, okay? He's not the crazy uncle who every time you get the family get together, it's like, oh, please, uh, stop talking to me. i got to get out of this. Or, or if you allow them to, to pray over the meal, and it's like, it has been 10 minutes. What are we doing here? Like, let's eat, you know? Um, I could give many examples. Um, for my family, but he's not the crazy uncle, okay? Um, the weird stuff, the weird stuff that you see people do on the internet or maybe been in a service, some of, that, some of the stuff that's just out there, and again, we talked about this last week, that we can't see or find in God's word. Um, those people that are, are doing that in the name of the Holy Spirit, they don't represent all people, who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? Here's a great example. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, okay? Come on, they won yesterday. Come on, somebody. Um, it's good. As long as I can remember, I've been a Packers fan. Um, 
I don't, know, I don't know why we're originally from Iowa, so kind of in North Iowa you have the Vikings or the Packers, and I guess I like green and yellow better. But I, I was a Packers fan. I've always been a Packers fan. Every time, though, ye- yesterday they played, and they played a playoff game in the stadium. Um, they finally let some fans in, in the audience, right? It's 30 degrees. Snow flurries are coming down. And it never fails, no matter how cold it is. There's always one gentleman who's slightly overweight, who's shirtless, and he has something painted on his chest, and he's got a beer in his hand, and he's just going crazy in the stands, right? It never fails. Like, dude, it is 30 degrees, and it's snowing, and you're shirtless right now. Like, what what are you doing, right? Packers fan. That Packers fan does not represent all Packers fans. (laughs) See what I'm saying? I watched the game but I was fully clothed yesterday, okay? (laughs) Thank God I was fully clothed, right? He doesn't represent all of us. He doesn't represent all of us. One of the easiest ways I like to, 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 to say this is, look, many times when people act weird in the name of the Holy Spirit, many people act weird um, because they like acting weird. Can we be real? Many people like this, like the guy, right? Why are you shirtless? He gets some type of little yeah, pump out of it somehow, you know what I'm saying? Why? He likes that. Okay, cool. But that doesn't necessarily represent everyone else. Here's what we see in the New Testament. When people operated under the authority of the Holy Spirit, they didn't look weird to others. They looked just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. What happens? Many times you read through the New Testament and you hear empowered or, or filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke with boldness. Fear, filled with the Holy Spirit, they laid hands on the sick and they recovered. Who does that sound like? Jesus. Speak with boldness. Preach the gospel. Don't care if you throw me in jail. doesn't matter. I have boldness. Where does it come from? It's the Holy Spirit working in them. Healing, miraculous signs, power in their lives. Where does it come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. Who does that sound like? Jesus. When people operate under the power of the Holy Spirit, It doesn't mean it won't be outside your comfort zone. That's not what I'm talking about. It most likely will be outside your comfort zone. But I'm saying this. Even the worst sinners are attracted to it because there's power and there's fruit. Who does that sound like? Jesus. He pushed the limits. It was outside some of the religious comfort zones, what things he said, the things he did, the the days of the week that he did it on, whatever. But at the end of the day, even the worst sinner said, I got to see this. Why? There's undeniable evidence it was God working. That's what he has for your life. If you're willing to have a relationship and to take a step further with God, who is the Holy Spirit. But we have to take a step. We have to take a step. I don't know where I'm at in my notes, but it's in here somewhere. All right, we're just going to keep going. We're going to the next point here. Point number three is this. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's God, number one. He's part of the Trinity, no doubt. He's not, he's not weird. He wants to partner with you to be powerful, to do his will. Number three, though, he's a person. Here's what I mean by that. I don't necessarily mean he's not a human. He's a person. Scripture always refers to the Holy Spirit as a he or a him because he's a person. Here's why this is important. If you don't see the Holy Spirit as a person, you'll struggle having a personal relationship with him. If I see him as an it or a ghost or some shady part of God that I want nothing to do with, I'll never have a full, intimate relationship with our God because I don't see him as a person. How can I have relationship with an it? I can't have a relationship with a chair, with a podium, with a table. Like, I can't do that. There's got to be give and take. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. In fact, let me show you this. In Luke 3, 22, it says this. The Holy Spirit descended. This is uh, after Jesus is baptized. What? The Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. Key words here. Like a dove. Is the Holy Spirit a dove? No. (laughs) He's not. He's not. Like a dove. 
They're trying to put what they're seeing on paper. Imagine the task of that. Luckily, they had help of the Holy Spirit, but imagine the task. Like a dove. Here's another one in Acts 2, 3. It says, Then what looked like flames of, or tongues of fire appeared, and it settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Like flames or tongues of fire, is the Holy Spirit fire? No. Like. Like. He's a person who you can have a relationship with. It's a part of God that you can grow closer to him, closer to God in a different aspect here on earth. He's not a thing, a force, or an animal. He is a person. So what separates a person from a thing? Three things here. Mind, will, and emotions. So on the back of your note-taking card, here's our last three right here. First one's this. The Holy Spirit has a mind. You gotta, we have to understand this part. This is so, so crucial, these last three. The Holy Spirit has a mind. In John 16, 13, it says this, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. He has the wisdom to guide you into all truth because He has a mind. The all, and think about this. The all-knowing God who created the universe, who has never had an idea, who's never messed up, who knows the future, who knows the past, all-knowing. When you become a believer, where does he dwell? In you. So have you ever had a question? God, I don't understand this. God, why is this going on? So we talked about last week. Ask. You have a helper who is God, who lives in you, who want, his desire is to help. He's not standing in the corner with his arms crossed saying, well, good luck figuring that out. When you get to heaven, I'll show you, okay? I'll re reveal it to you. What did Jesus say? When he comes, he'll guide you into all truth. Not someday, today. Today, he wants to show you all truth. Not hide some things or, well, you'll never know. He wants to reveal himself to you fully. Why? He loves you that much. He loves you that much. What an incredible God we serve. I, it, he is so good, so good not to hold anything back, to say, look, I want to give you the kingdom. I want to give you my kingdom that it may, done, uh, may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here's, here's your access, Holy Spirit. He's going to live with you. He's going to live in you. And you have a step to take, baptism in the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that next week. And so you can receive the fullness. He's not just in you. He's all around you. You are, baptism is immersed into. I'm already getting ahead of myself. All right, next thing is this. The Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. He has a mind. He has a will. Let's look at Acts 16, 6 through 7 here. This is just a, sh a short story, but it says this. Now, when they had gone through, oh, man, uh, I'm going to butcher some of these words on here, okay, but bear with me. I'm going to try anyway. Uh, Phrygia, okay, in the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. That's what I want you to see, not the, not the words, this right here. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So what happened? They're going, they're living their life, they're going on mission, but forbidden and did not permit. What's the Holy Spirit doing here? He's using his will. He's exercising his will, saying, <laughs> I know you came this way, and many times there's other stories where they would make it all the way to the city, and he would not permit them to go in. Hey, not here. But at that point, what do they, what do they have a decision to make? The Holy Spirit's exercising his will, but they still have to choose to walk in obedience. They still have to choose to walk in obedience. Because on their heart, they're saying, we're going, man. We're going to the ends of the world, and we're going to preach the gospel, and we're going to do this and this and this. They're making their own plans, which are good plans. But when the Holy Spirit says, no, you need to go over here instead, they had to be obedient. And can I tell you, it's the same for you and for me. 
it can be easy to make good plans for our lives. Well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to graduate at this time, and then I'm going to get this job, and man, I'm just going to ride that out. I don't really like this job. Actually, I hate this job. I'm not called to do this job, but it pays good. I'm going to retire early, and I'm going to be great. Not necessarily bad plans. But along that path, did the Holy Spirit say, I don't have this for you? And what decision did you make? Can I tell you, I've been in seasons of my life where I got that red light, and I kept on walking anyway. No, but this makes sense to me. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Because when I started walking that way, things got crazy in my life. And the Holy Spirit said, that's why I said to stop and to go here instead. Can I tell you this as a word of encouragement? If you've blown right past that red light and you're just still going after the Holy Spirit gave it to you, it's never too late. It's never too late. You could have said, man, that was, that was 40 years ago. It's never too late. You can get back on track. God's that big. He's that good. He makes the impossible things possible through the Holy Spirit. But what do we have to do? When he says, that's not my will for you, you need to say, yes, sir. All right, where do I need to go then? Well, you need to go over here. That doesn't make sense financially. My accountant's not going to like that, right? Because that makes no sense financially. Who's the boss? Who's the boss? He has a will. The good news is this. The Holy Spirit knows the will of God, and he wants to talk to you, and he wants to tell you the will of God. It's not a mystery. The will of God's not a mystery. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's will is the will of God. Because he is God, right? That makes sense. The will of God is the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. See how simple God made it for us? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's God's will. I don't know if this thing I'm facing is maybe, you know, God put this on me to try me, to test me. I think it's his will for me to face this thing. Have you got in his word and looked at the life of Jesus because it will reveal his will. It will reveal his will. This is why in here, many, basically every week, we pray for the sick. We pray for the sick. And sometimes we pray and we don't see immediate response of healing, but that doesn't stop us. Why? Because Jesus healed. Jesus healed. He revealed in his word that it's his, his will. He never came up to somebody and said, Man, you were this close to receiving your physical healing from that, that leprosy, right? But it's not God's will, okay? You're going to get your healing sometime in heaven. Good luck to you, all right? We'll see you around. Never did that. Oh, did you pray? Did you pray like this and like this and like this? Oh, man. Sorry, not God's will. He never did that. But we do that on earth because we're trying to rationalize why something didn't happen rather than, oh, it didn't work. You know what? I'm going to get back in this thing. I'm going to take him at his word. I'm going to grow a little bit more. I'm just going to lean into it, and I'm going to keep praying even harder. I'm going to go to battle even harder until I see the breakthrough. That's God's desire for you. That's what he wants you to do. In fact, that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. What? Guide you into all truth. God, we prayed, and it didn't align with your word. Holy Spirit, I need your help then. Show me what I can do. <laughs> empower me to pray again. Give me just the strength to stand for one more day. Holy Spirit, am I helping anybody today? Romans 8, 26 says this, in the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. We're going to talk about Baptism of the Holy Spirit, our prayer language here in the next couple of weeks. But here's what I want you to see today. When I don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit wants to partner with me and what? Intercede with me on my behalf. When I pray in the Spirit, it's not a weird thing, it's not a freaky thing. Our mind will try to tell you that, but I will tell you this. When I pray in the Spirit, He's interceding for me. When I pray in the Spirit, here's what he's doing. He's taking any of my imperfect prayers that I've filtered through my human mind. He's taking those, 
He's making them perfect and aligning them with the will of God and then presenting them to Heavenly Father. That's what he's doing. Why would I run from him when he helps me pray prayers that our Heavenly Father wants to answer? There's one thing I missed. I'm going to go back. I don't know where it is in my notes, but I need to say this. Wouldn't it be one of the greatest tricks of the devil to take the Holy Spirit where you get power and where you get boldness and where you get the ability to live, love, and look like Jesus every single day? He empowers you to be more like Jesus. Wouldn't it be a great trick of the devil to take the thing you need the most here on earth, take it, make it weird, and make it strange, and make people misrepresent Holy Spirit over the years, time and time again. So that way, whenever you hear Holy Spirit, which is where your power, which is where your boldness and your freedom come from, direct line to God for you to say, oh, no thanks. You see, when we look at it as war, in spiritual warfare, how obvious that is? Oh, okay. It must be pretty important then for me to lean into this. Last, last week we said, Jesus told his disciples, don't go anywhere until you get this. Must be pretty important. I've got to have it. Don't let the weirdness of something you've seen, heard, or been in keep you from the truth that's in here. Not what you saw someone else do. What did Jesus say he has for you? The last one is this, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this. The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit has emotions. So often we just put the Holy Spirit in, in this corner, you know, he's some ghost or some being, and my goal today was to make him personal to you. He's got a mind. He has a will for you. It's God's will. He has emotions. And in fact, in Ephesians 4.30, it says this, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. What is grief? Emotion. It's emotion. What grieves the Holy Spirit then? We, get, we, we better figure it out, right? If it's a command, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let's read it in context. Ephesians 4, 25 through 32. It says this, Therefore, Putting away all away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. You're a representative of Jesus himself. Can I tell you, you may have lost coworkers, family members, friends who are looking to you, especially in times when our world is crazy. They're looking to you and they're looking to see are you different? Is what you have real? Because now is the testing time. Is it real? The storm is hitting. Do you actually have a foundation to stand on? If they see you panicking, in anxiety, in, in, in letting corrupt words proceed out of your mouth or come out on your Facebook page, what do they think? Nah, they're just like us. They're just, they're just some group that gets together on Sundays. I'm ruining my testimony when I let corrupt words come out of my mouth. And what does the Holy Spirit do? It grieves him. It hurts his heart. 
Why? Because he has better for you. He has more for you. (sighs) Bitterness, wrath, anger, evil speaking, unforgiveness. It hurts the Holy Spirit's heart because it's keeping you back from his best. And if you've allowed any of these things into your life, he's not the one right now if you feel condemned about it, oh man, I've really messed up. I'm an I'm a awful Christian because I'm not as close to God as I thought I was. If you're having those thoughts right now, that's from the enemy. That's condemnation. That's caused to hold you back. He's wanting to keep you back. Conviction is from the Holy Spirit. What does conviction do? I, let, I, I react in anger, grieves the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes in and he says, hey, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that to your spouse as you walked out the door today. You shouldn't have treated your son that way. Hey, you shouldn't have talked that way about your boss behind their back. You need to make that right. Now I have a choice, obey or disobey. He convicts me so that I can get better every day and I can grow with him. He will not condemn me and remind me of past failures. Remember what you did 20 years ago? Remember what you did last night? Look, when I ask for forgiveness, God forgives And he wants you to move forward, not keep looking back at your past failures. Don't go back there. Put your hand to the plow. Keep moving forward. That's what God has for you. What grieves the Holy Spirit is when a believer continues to walk in sin and live in a worldly lifestyle. He says, do not even give place. Don't even give an inch to the devil. Don't give place to him in your life. Not even a glimpse of darkness. Is there even an appearance? If someone watched you today, tomorrow at work, is there even a glimpse of darkness in your life? He says, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Shine like bright lights in a world full of dark and perverse people. Shine. That's that's what we're called to do. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. He is what? Part of the Holy God. There is no darkness in him. There is no changing or shifting shadows in him. There is no evil in him. There's no sin in him. That's how me and you can live righteous. That's how me and you can live in a different level here on earth. Salvation's for eternity, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit's for your spiritual success here on earth right now so you can have power so that you can pray, God, let your kingdom be done here on earth as it is in heaven, and it can happen because of the Holy Spirit. He's grieved when we choose sin over him. And I don't deal with it, and he convicts me, and I just move on past. Don't become calloused to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When he convicts, it's out of love. He says, let me show you why that was wrong. Let's get better together. It's out of love. The Holy Spirit is God. He's not a weirdo. He's not the crazy uncle. He's a person that we can get to know. If we never see him as a person, as a being, a part of God, we'll struggle having a personal relationship with him. The Holy Spirit has a mind, he has a will, and he has emotions for a reason, so that you can relate to him and he can relate to you and you can have a closer relationship with your heavenly father. His number one job is to help you live, love, and look more like Jesus every single day. You can walk in victory because of Holy Spirit. Victory can be yours. Here's some reflection questions. We give reflection questions at the end of our messages for our, what we call community groups. And this is simply, community group is kind of whatever you want it to be. It may be you and your spouse. Maybe you and some friends getting together during the week at a coffee shop. It may be um, you and your, your, your kids and, and your spouse at the dining room table. But we give these as a way to take this and make it personal. Because if we just hear God's word and we don't do anything with it, we're just playing church games and we're wasting our time today. But you gotta do something with it. And the reflection question is this, how's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Today, please hear my heart, I'm not elevating the Holy Spirit above any of the other trinity. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying though the Holy Spirit, here's what he does. Holy Spirit will only ever point you to Jesus. Look at the life of Jesus. What did Jesus always do? Glorify the Father. What does the Father do? He uses the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Trinity. 
all three working together. But how's your relationship with him? Have you put him in a box of crazy uncle? Kept him over here because you didn't know, haven't been taught, didn't seek, didn't ask? Have you been grieving him because he's been convicting you and you haven't changed? Is he grieved because of the way you've been living your life this past week? If so, it's okay. You can make it right. Get back on track. It's never too late. What I ask you to do this week is to read Acts chapters 1 and 2. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. As you read these two chapters, he's going to reveal his character to you. You're going to hear from Jesus as well. You're going to see how he works in your life. And what happens is it's going to prepare you. It's going to answer some questions from today and confirm what we talked about today. But it's going to prepare you for the next couple weeks as we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. How it wasn't just something for some group some time long ago, but it's for you and it's for today. In fact, next week I'm going to talk about how there are actually three baptisms available for every believer. Baptism, I'm not talking about water baptism. Baptism means an immersion into. And so... We're going to make it real clear next week. I'm going to show you from God's word from the very beginning to the end how we see three baptisms all the way through, even in the Old Testament to the New Testament for us today. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who you've given us as a promise from you, as a gift to be our helper, to be our comforter, to be our guide, to be our counselor when we need it. God, today we just ask. Your word says we have not because we ask not. Today we ask for your help. Holy Spirit, help us understand. Help us grow closer with our Heavenly Father this week. Help us be free from things that have been holding us back. We thank you for moving in our life, and we thank you that as we lean more into your word, Jesus, we take you at your word. We don't second guess it. We don't overthink it. We believe it, and it's your word above any word in our lives. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen.